Okay, so uh, this is the I think the fifth one, sixth one, interrupts. Okay, so before you watch this video, make sure you go over your notes and scheduling so you remember what uh, scheduling algorithms do and about preemptive schedulers. Okay, this is the key thing here is to do with preemptive scheduling. So, the big questions for this video is how does the CPU decide whether to pause a task? And then, how does the CPU actually switch between tasks without losing track of what it was doing? So remember, first thing we've got to think about is why multitasking is a misnomer. Okay, so computers are serial in nature. The FDE cycle means that one instruction has been executed at a time, and that is obviously going to continue in the sequence until the current set of instructions or that particular process is completed, at which point the CPU will then flip over to handle another task. Alright? Now uh, sometimes something goes wrong with the computer, okay, or something needs the, the CPU's attention, and the, there needs to be a way for the CPU to see if something needs attention and then to decide whether that particular interrupt needs its attention now or whether what it's doing is actually more important. Now, what is the CPU going to do in order to handle this process? The first thing it can do is it can run a polling loop. So when you poll something, you're asking, you know, that wherever it is um, for its opinion or it's you know you're seeking its attention. So if the CPU ran a polling loop, it would basically be going around all of the different devices, asking them um, if they require attention. And there's obviously a problem with that. It's going to be a waste of the CPU's time checking around all the devices to see if they need um, the CPU's attention. So is there a better solution? Basically, the CPU could wait for devices to actually ask for the CPU's attention and then decide whether it needs to basically dedicate time to dealing with that request. So an interrupt is your definition is a signal to the CPU that a device or a process, because it could be a program, needs attention. Now, what things actually might interrupt an FDE cycle? Remember, we're here, we're talking about that serial nature of the CPU, F continual FDE cycles repeatedly taking place. So, data could be waiting to be read, uh, input-output processes have completed, or there's an error, there could be a call to an external device, for example, a printer or a scanner or a headset or whatever it is. Okay, so you've got hardware interrupts and you've got examples of software interrupts. Okay, um, an example of data transfer could be uh, the buffer um, used to transfer data from RAM to the hard disk is now emptied and so therefore needs to be filled up with new data. Um, it could be key presses in, a, in an event-driven program. Someone's pressed a particular key that caused something to occur. Um, program needs to read data from a scanner or send data to a printer or read uh, data from uh, um, an external device. So lots of different things. And basically, the CPU will need to stop what it is doing and uh, deal with uh, transferring the data or whatever it is that needs to take place. So how does the CPU handle these interrupts? Well, the, the key thing to think about are priorities. Because uh, more than one um, device or program may actually interrupt at once. However, some of them may be more important than others. That's why there's a queen or wherever it is over there. Okay? So... Those interrupts could be occurring at the same time, but some kind of priority needs to be given to determine what needs to be handled at a particular point in time, right? This is a simplified example of priorities, okay? The most important interrupt to a computer system is interruption to a power supply, okay? Because the operating system needs to be able to shut down gracefully in order to make sure it's not corrupted. And you know that if your phone or your laptop, or your tablet, or whatever it is, it will warn you that you're running out of power and tell you to start saving your documents or whatever it is. But when it actually 
is going to now run out of juice totally it will kill all the documents and shut itself down properly to maintain itself okay and then you got other types of interrupt okay in terms of priority there so now let's look at actually what CPU is doing so we learned about the fetch decode execute cycle and there's those three stages taking in place in it okay but actually at some point in there we need to know whether there's an interrupt coming or not okay so an instruction is going to be fetched it's going to be decoded it's going to be executed now before we fetch the next instruction actually what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if there's been an interrupt because if there hasn't been an interrupt then we can continue fetching otherwise we're going to stop what we were doing and actually fetch the instructions that are needed for handling that interrupt okay so this is now a modified FDE cycle what actually happens during this extra stage okay the CPU is going to finish the instruction executing okay and it's going to check the interrupt register if there's an interrupt that's come in and that interrupt has a higher priority than the current job then basically we need to stop what we're doing to handle that that interrupt okay because we've got a bit of a crisis so whatever's in the CPU registers are going to get put into a stack in RAM all right the interrupt service routine is loaded into the program counter and then we're going to start processing those instructions and then once that's all been dealt with if the job queue indicates that that original job is still at the top of the queue then basically that stack is going to be restored from the spec into the CPU registers in reverse order and I'm going to explain why in a bit and then that job continues getting processed but there may have been another interrupt or something else could now be higher priority and instead that other task is going to be carried out okay what is a stack Stack is basically a last in, first out, so it's a LIFO data structure. So if you have a stack of items, whatever goes into the stack first is going to end up being the last item that comes out. So in the case of how we can interrupt, the whatever's in the registers gets put into a series into a stack in the, in the RAM. And once the interrupt has been handled and it's time to restore the contents because the stack is is a last in first out then whatever came out last from the ram is going to be the first uh, from the cpu is going to be the first item to be pushed back in okay so everything gets put back into the cpu in reverse order and then the cpu can basically just pick up exactly where it left off and continue processing that task it was on before okay so here's a couple more questions for you to do some research on before you come in okay so what happens if more interrupts keep on coming in um, what is interrupt masking and then you can look at the relationship between um, uh, interrupt masking and interrupt handlers that second question okay what is interrupt masking that's quite important and it's something for you to look at before you come into class okay so you should basically be able to explain now how the CPU decides whether it needs to pause a task or not and then you should understand how the CPU is switching between tasks without losing track of what it was doing i.e. using the stack and then restoring in reverse order